Hi there, uh, my name is Robbie, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about kind of a very difficult subject here, and uh, uh, it's kind of a consciousness lesson here. Uh, what are you? You are a piece of consciousness here. And I'll go into it, uh, kind of breaking it down in a couple different ways here. Uh, first of all, it, if we're to talk about life, um, a differentiation of life from non-life, um, uh, really life, the difference between um, life and non-life is, is really that life uses information in a beneficial process. Um, all the way down to the cell, it's using information. So then leads you to the next question, well what is information? Well, <clears throat> you know, we're living in, a, in the information age, seems like it would be <laughs> something very easy, we use it all the time, but we really take it for granted on what information is. Um, really, information is non-physical. It, um, it, it, there's nothing physical about information. Anything can be information, but it takes a conscious being to interpret information, to create it. Because uh, really, information is a choice. It's really a realization of choice. It's bits, bits of information, this or that, up or down, left or right, uh, sweet or sour, hot or cold. This is information uh, in its basic form. That's why computers use a binary system, a zero and a one. Um, you know, in order to, for their language, you know, they don't use a unitary system, <laughs> just just zeros. You know, wouldn't work that way. You need a, you need a uh, contrast of choice. So in order to really uh, explain this thoroughly and really grasp it, uh, we're gonna uh, I'm gonna just blank out the screen here uh, because most people use um, in basically uh, our dominant forms of information are our hearing and our sight, sight being most dominant for most people. So if we just blank out the screen here um, into a white, and for this explanation you're going to have to uh, understand that um, you have to assume that this white that encompasses the screen encompasses all of your vision. Because um, I understand you can see outside of the screen, also outside of the monitor itself. But assume that the uh, white uh, basically encompasses all of your sight. Um, now, the only reason why you can even understand um, that the color, the background, uh, is white is through memory. It's through a process of, uh, you know, one of the basic components of, of consciousness, memory. Um, because if you had no memory, you would have no recognition of a prior state to that. Every moment would be new. So this would not be a color to you. This would be blind. This would be no information. This would be just is. Um, so and it wouldn't matter what color the background could have been. It could have been red. It could have been blue. It could have been anything. It would still be blind because you couldn't differentiate uh, a difference between two things, uh, and um, you couldn't even recognize the background uh, itself because that is just what is. So basically, um, now that we've gone into basically what a, a no information is, um, we're going to talk about what it takes to um, interpret information, basically to create it. Um, you need basically four things. You're going to need uh, experience, which is basically something happening. The screen turned white. Okay, experience. That's information. Uh, something happening. Uh, then you need memory, a way to store that. Um, then you're going to need uh, computing, a way to, to sort it out, to uh, organize it. Uh, organizing information to, you know, to realize that you've just witnessed two things. It's, they're both sight differences. Um, and then you're going to need uh, a self-modifying uh, system, you know, um, you know, which is basically free will, a way to make yourself more profitable. Um, now, I think it's important to note that um, you can utilize information using the first three of those, but uh, that's assuming that you have a, um, a conscious being that uh, has put purpose into those three things because um, 
and this is where it gets a little bit complicated and stuff. The self-modifying part really differentiates what is conscious and what is not conscious. Um, because we have computers, for example, that can do the first three. Uh, they have information, they have memory, and they have a computing. They have a way to uh, sort things out. But if you turn the computer on, it does nothing. It can't use that information and do anything unless a conscious person that is self-modifying puts purpose into that computer to make it do something. Okay, that's the big difference. Uh, the self-modifying part is is what makes things living. Uh, it's it's the useful um, the useful uh, beneficial process of of utilizing information to benefit itself. Um, so. I think uh, if you really look at that and evaluate that, and you can um, evaluate all of those three things, all, all of those four things that I uh, talked about there that encompass consciousness, you're going to realize that all of life um, comes from consciousness in some form because it's utilizing information. Okay. Uh, I know of no other way um, information can come about except through consciousness. Um, and if somebody else has another way it can come out, I would love to hear it. But I have never heard of, uh, of uh, something non-conscious being able to utilize information usefully, okay, without the the, um, without it coming from a con you know somebody that could use that information usefully like I said like a computer doesn't know but if we put purpose into it then it does what we made it to do um, so basically what we can interpret from that and what we can derive off of that is really three things um, all life um, has some form of consciousness um, and when we're talking about consciousness, we're just talking about different levels. I mean, um, you know, our levels of consciousness, our choices, choice range is much greater than that of um, like a crab. But still, a crab can make a few choices. I mean, if you poke it with a stick, it can, you know, either duck down, it can try to attack you, it can run away. Uh, it could do a few things. It has a few choices it can make. And so we're just talking about levels of consciousness again, you know. Um, so either all life has some form of consciousness, or uh, number two, um, all life is created off of a conscious being, but is not necessarily conscious itself. Or three, um, all life is created from a conscious being and is also a form of consciousness itself. Um, so uh, I hope I made some sense out of a very complicated subject. I, I may go into a few of these things here. Um, for more thorough explanation, uh, I'll leave a link to uh, um, you know a, a very good series. Uh, it's um, a Big Toe series of books that I read and I, I really enjoyed it and I, I definitely promote uh, um, Tom, uh, Thomas Campbell's books. Um, so uh, I'll go ahead and uh, leave a link to that so you can watch his hour and a half uh, lecture uh, where he goes into you know his big theory of everything which is very consistent you know information is you know an, an integral part of consciousness anyway uh, I guess that'll do it for me uh, so uh, take care everybody see you next time